Care of the intubated patient. Why is this important? Careful management of the intubated patient decreases complications associated with intubation, such as ventilator associated pneumonia, mucus plugging, dumping of water collected in the tube into the patient's airway, accidental dislodgement of the endotracheal tube requiring reintubation. It is important to note that reinstrumentation of the airway can lead to subglottic stenosis if patients require reintubation. Also, if reintubation is difficult, this could of course lead to respiratory arrest. And finally, airway damage and edema, as mentioned, including subglottic stenosis. Sedation. Proper sedation minimizes patient thrashing, which can cause airway damage and accidental extubations. Use of an opioid or benzodiazepine are often adequate choices, although medications are often based on institutional availability. Neuromuscular blockade may be required to minimize excessive movements and improve patient ventilator dysynchrony. Turning a patient and bedside cares. Ideally, patients should only be moved with at least two people. More than two people may be necessary depending on the patient's size and severity of illness. One person should be used to secure the airway and the other person to gently move the patient. Turning should be done with as minimal movement to the patient's head and neck. Keep the head and shoulders squared as you would for a log roll. This decreases rubbing of the tube against the airway, which can cause long-term damage. Care should be taken to avoid pulling or tension on the tube. Another way to change the linen on an infant is to um, provide support and completely lift the child while someone's stabilizing the ET tube. Pull the linen out from underneath, put fresh linen under, and then gently put the baby back down. ensuring the stability of the tube the entire time. In order to make sure there's not too much tension on the tubing, sometimes we put some gauze or some padding underneath the end of the tube. Tubing. Humidification of the ventilator may cause excessive water to build up in the, in the tubing. Accidental dumping of water into the patient's airway can increase risk of ventilator-associated pneumonia, bronchoconstriction and difficulty ventilating the patient, and a noxious feeling to the patient. The end of the endotracheal tube should always be at the highest point of all the tubing. A tube tree holder should be used if available. Suctioning. Patients should be suctioned every two hours and as needed. This prevents mucus plugging, atelectasis, ventilator-associated pneumonia, and desaturation events. Based on the size of the endotracheal tube, suctioning should be done to a predetermined depth to avoid damage to the patient's airway. The tube's been secured. It's time to connect to the ventilator. And it's important that the endotracheal tube be higher than the tubing so that condensation doesn't inadvertently enter the patient's airway where it can cause bronchoconstriction or increase the likelihood of ventilator-associated pneumonia. Now that that's done, we'll suction the airway. And in order to prevent trauma at the carina, we only want to suction to the end of the endotracheal tube. The easiest way to do that is to find a reference point on the tube. In this case, I'm going to use 14. I'm going to measure the distance to the end of the tube, the end of the tube, and that's another five centimeters. So I want to insert the suction catheter to 19 centimeters. Right here. Insert 18 centimeters again, the end of the tube. Then, as always, apply intermittent suction, rotating the catheter on the way out for no longer than 10 seconds. Reconnect the patient to the ventilator circuit and ensure proper placement of the tubing.